Here's another example of a probability calculation of something like a poker hand. I put poker in quotes because I wanted to do something that wasn't just uh, the most basic, whether it's five cards and the standard poker hands. So this isn't going to be the, the usual game of poker. It will be out of a 52-card deck, just to keep that the same. Usual, uh, same four suits, all that kind of stuff. But we're going to have seven cards, and unlike a game like seven card, uh, most seven card poker games, where we actually take the best five out of seven, um, we're really going to look at a hand of seven full cards, okay? And so what we, we want to do is we want to get the probability of getting, um, let's say, um, what do I want to call this? I want to call this like a super full house, super full house, which will mean a triple, a three of a kind, and two pair all together. So that makes seven card. Okay, hopefully that sounds like a fairly special hand. I, I think that sounds like a pretty good hand, so I think the probability is going to be fairly small to get it, but it's not exactly obvious how uh, how uh, hard that's going to be out of seven cards. Okay, but it's going to illustrate something just a little different. Same ideas, though, uh, as the simpler example that I just recorded. Okay, so first of all, number of outcomes in the sample space. Ooh, well, if you watch the other video, uh, which I recommend, um, just says it's like poker probability for a full house, um, we know that this is without replacement, because you have all the cards in your hand at once. And because that's that's true, we can at least entertain the idea of count, counting without order. And because we don't care about the order they come in, we're going to do that without order. Okay, so that's going to be 52C7. It's now a standard counting print problem. 52 cards from a uniform pool. I make seven choices. Without replacement and without order, that's 52C7. That is a pretty big number. 133,784,560. Okay, so that's going to be the denominator of our probability calculation. Now, how many super full houses are there? Okay, so number in the event of interest. Well, I'm going to make a table again. Um, and here I'm going to do something. I'm going to realize that there's the two pairs that really kind of has to go as a group, one whole group, and then there's the triple. And I'm going to be looking at um, the number, or let's see, I guess I call it value in my notes and in the other video. The value, like two through ace, and the suit choice. Okay. So, um, for the triple, that's a little simpler. Uh, well, let me let me do the two pairs because that sort of attacks it head on. Okay, we could imagine I'm going to pick the value for the first pair, which would be 13, and for the second pair, which would be 12, because they're not supposed to be the same, or else it would be four of a kind. But I don't want to put 13 times 12 because it's just two pairs. It's not a first pair and a second pair, and I'm not counting with order here, and I shouldn't put any artificial ordering in here that's not real. Okay, so that's going to be a 13, ooh, uh, let me use the, I was going to use the alternate notation for choose, but let me use this notation. That's a 13C2. So I need to tell you, um, if I'm going to have a super full house, I might say, hey, it's, the pairs are jacks and queens, and the triple is a seven. And I don't have to tell you, oh, I got the jacks first, and then the queens second. That doesn't, that's not relevant, and that would be an artificial order that we don't want to include. Now, I can tell the difference between pairs of, pair of jacks, pair of queens, and a triple seven, or if the pair, one of the things in the pair was a seven, for example. So I don't have to worry about um, dividing by some factor across these guys. This is just going to be 11 choices, because once I've got, say, the jacks and the queens, those are not legal to be the triple. Um, and I don't have to worry about shuffling these guys together and and destroying some sort of order here because I can actually tell the difference. There really is a functional difference between whether the seven is in the triple or if it's one of the pairs. So it's one of the su subtlest things is I've got the two pairs as a master group and then each of the pairs themselves um, are going to be a group themselves. And here's how that works. Okay, once I figured out that it's say jacks and queens, let me let me put this down. So say jack, jack, queen, queen, seven, seven, seven. It's really helpful to actually have something in mind. And I'm going to make it more explicit, like jack of hearts, jack of spades, queen of clubs, queen of diamonds, 
sevens of clubs, diamonds, hearts, let's say. Okay. So it's really helpful to actually have something, and really physically hold it in your hand can be helpful if you're really um, new at this. Um, that's the kind of thing I'm thinking about. And when I was saying that we don't have to worry about mixing these guys together, okay, that really is a different hand from if I had two sevens, two queens, and three jacks. Whereas the reason I had a C here, a 13 C2, which is 13 times 12 over 2, is that jacks, pair of jacks, pair of queens, and sevens is the same as pair of queens, pair of jacks, and sevens. Because distinguishing those guys is artificially introducing order, which I'm not supposed to do. Okay, so now for the suits, let's see. Uh, now I break these into two separate groups, okay? Because um, once I've got that this is definitely jacks and this is definitely queens, I need to account for the suits here and the suits here, and those are not going to interact. So that's going to be a, a four choose two. And then that's going to be a four choose two here. And then this is going to be a four choose one, which is another way of saying just, oh, sorry, four choose three, which is the same thing as four, because it's equivalent to just saying what suit did I not get here. Okay, so um, that's all the information. The value for the two pairs, which is probably the trickiest thing, it's very analogous to the two-pair calculation for a regular five-card hand. Then there's the triple, the value for the triple. And notice the without replacement is what's saying 13, then 12, then 11, things like that. Um, and then the suits for the that, that pair, the jacks, the suits for this guy, and then the... Um, and then the suits for the triple. So if I multiply those all guys, all guys, all of those guys together, I turn out to get 123,552. I just did that calculation already. Okay. And then divide by to get the probability, the 18378456060. That's an eight. And I get, um, I get. Let's see, 0. 0.00092358. Or, in other words, if I move that over, 0.092%. Um, Not very big. So less than 1 out of 10,000, no, less than 1 out of 1,000 hands are going to be a super full house in this funky game of seven-card poker.